Hello. In this video, I want to explain empirical risk minimization, which is one of the main paradigms in machine learning. Most of the machine learning applications in your daily life, such as translation apps or song recommendation systems, are based on empirical risk minimization. Let me explain the basic principles behind empirical risk minimization using the task of predicting the maximum daytime temperature. Consider waking up some morning during winter in Finland and looking outside the window. It seems to become a nice sunny day, which is ideal for a ski trip. To choose the right gear, such as clothing and wax for the skis, it is vital to have some idea for the maximum daytime temperature, which is typically reached around early afternoon. If we expect the maximum daytime temperature of around plus 10 degrees, we might not put on the extra warm jacket, but rather take only some extra shirt for change. Let us try to develop a method for obtaining high precision forecasts of the maximum daytime temperature using machine learning. To apply machine learning, we need data. And to predict the maximum daytime temperature, it seems a good idea to use data points that represent winter days in Finland. We cannot fully characterize a whole data point as this would amount to collecting all data about one single day. Instead, we use only two properties to characterize data points. One property of a data point or a day is the minimum daytime temperature. This property can be determined easily during the morning of any ski day. As a second property of a data point, we use its maximum daytime temperature. This property is what we are interested in. We refer to such a quantity of interest as the label of a data point. The machine learning problem here is to predict the maximum daytime temperature based on the minimum daytime temperature that we observe in the morning of the ski day. Machine learning methods learn a hypothesis H, which is a function or a map that reads in the feature X, which is the minimum daytime temperature as an argument, the output or function value of the hypothesis is the prediction or guess or approximation for the label Y, which is the maximum daytime temperature in our application. Machine learning methods cannot consider all possible maps as a hypothesis, since there are too many of them to fit into a finite computer. Therefore, we restrict the hypothesis maps to the set of linear maps with some weight W and bias B. This set of feasible hypothesis maps is referred to as a machine learning model or hypothesis space. Different machine learning methods use different models. One popular example for such a model is the set of linear maps. The goal of machine learning is to learn a hypothesis map such that the prediction error is small for any data point, which means for any winter day or ski day in our application. To make this informal goal precise, we need to fix two things. First, we need some measure for the size of the prediction error. And second, we need to make precise what we actually mean by saying for any data point. To solve the first issue, we use a loss function. A loss function takes as input a pair consisting of a data point with features X and label Y and a hypothesis H. The function value of the loss function measures the size of the prediction error. Different machine learning methods 
use different loss functions. One widely used loss function for data points with numeric labels is the squared error loss. This loss is simply defined as the square of the prediction error. Another loss function is the absolute error loss. This loss is defined as the absolute value of the prediction error. Now that we have a measure for the size of the prediction error, we need to make precise our requirement that the prediction error should be small for any data point. To this end, we will interpret the data points as the results or outputs of a random generator. We think of some fictional underlying random generator that is used to produce the data points. Each data point is obtained from a separate or individual or independent execution of the random generator. In this model, the data points become realizations of independent and identically distributed random variables. The distribution of these random variables is related to the properties of the fictional random generator. This distribution is either a design choice that is specified by some human expert, or it is estimated using statistical methods. Given such a probability distribution for the data points, we use it to make the notion of any data point precise. We somehow identify the probability distribution with the concept of any data point. Any data point can be obtained by drawing a random number or a, a random data point according to this distribution. The IID assumption is maybe the most widely used probabilistic model in machine learning. This assumption amounts to interpreting data points as realizations of independent random variables that have an identical probability distribution. We denote this probability distribution by P of X and Y, where X is the feature and Y is the label of a data point. As soon as we interpret the data points as realizations of random variables, any function of the data points must also become a realization of a random variable. In particular, the predicted label, which is the function value of the hypothesis, the prediction error and the loss become realizations of some random variables. And the joint distribution of all these random variables is fully determined by the probability distribution P of X and Y. A main reason for using the IID assumption is that it allows us to define optimality or optimal predictors in a strict mathematical sense. A widely used optimality criterion is the expected loss or risk. The risk is the expectation of the loss incurred by a given hypothesis edge on a random data point, which is drawn according to the distribution P of X and Y. The optimal predictor is then given by the hypothesis edge that has minimum risk. However, in general, we do not know the probability distribution P of X and Y, and therefore we cannot simply evaluate the expectation in the definition of the risk. The main idea behind empirical risk minimization is to approximate the expected loss or risk using the empirical mean over some training data points. Empirical risk minimization delivers a hypothesis with minimum average loss incurred on the training data points. Many machine learning methods are based on empirical risk minimization, but with different choices for the loss function or the model that consists of all candidate hypotheses. 
the approximation of risk by the empirical mean can be analyzed rigorously using probability theory. One key result of probability theory is the law of large numbers. The law of large numbers states that under mild conditions, the empirical mean of IID random variables converges to the mean of these random variables. We can apply the law of large numbers in our setting since the loss incurred by a given hypothesis edge a realization, is a realization of a random variable by our IID assumption. For a given loss function and hypothesis edge, the probability distribution of this random variable is fully determined by the distribution P of X and Y of the data points. Let me wrap up this video about empirical risk minimization. Our, our initial goal was to learn a hypothesis that predicts well for any data point. We made this informal wish precise by defining the risk of a hypothesis as the expectation of the loss incurred by this hypothesis when applied to a realization of a data point that is drawn from some underlying probability distribution. This probabilistic model allows to define the notion of an optimal hypothesis as the one which minimizes the risk. Since we typically don't know beforehand the probability distribution from which the data is generated, we approximate the risk by the empirical mean. This approximation is justified by the law of large numbers, which states that the empirical mean of M IID random variables converges to the expectation as the sample size M grows to infinity. Thank you for your attention.